Well, I had the opportunity to show here at the Catholic Theological Union. I was, when I saw the space, I was absolutely amazed. It's so large and well lit. And I thought, I don't know how I possibly can fill it up. And I just said I was going to do it. And I just kept creating more work. There are about 70 images here. The objective of this exhibit is to celebrate the communion of saints. And what do I mean by that? To celebrate the people that are spiritual leaders that can tell us so much about our own lives. In some cases, I use a figure in contemporary dress who, who looks like us. And this has been done throughout history. But in addition, I use unexpected media like fishnet or collages or wax in combination with fluid acrylic and watercolor. After viewers see this exhibit, I hope that they're inspired to explore some of these amazing figures themselves. For example, St. Anthony, who has endured so much, and, and the fact that he was in a desert and how we too feel a lot, of, a lot of times that we're in a desert emotionally or spiritually and yet can find a solution, can find hope in our travails. We're very grateful for those who had the foresight to create an art gallery in our, in our school and to be able to especially have this important exhibit um, of, of Marsha's work at CTU. I love Marsha's depiction of, of uh, Bakita. I think her story is so powerful such a, a model of holiness emerging out of such uh, horrendous suffering that she had been subjected to. I think what um, that image does for me is it invites reflection on the modern day forms of slavery, uh, trafficking of women and children, for example. And so I see in that image of her, the encouragement to confront and do everything that we can to eliminate those forms of slavery and take her model of courage and holiness to be able to um, be sure that all peoples have a life of dignity and respect. I think what I'm most proud about this exhibit is, is that I try to look at each image and figure out what is unique to this image. Like for, for instance, this is an example of religious persecution. And I wanted to show fear and evil. On the other hand, I wanted to show loneliness here. And joy here. Each image has a different personality, a different approach to it. Mother Cabrini, founder of the Institute of the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, established 67 orphanages, schools, and hospitals in Europe, Central, South, and North America. Rather than attempting to depict a likeness of Mother Cabrini, I decided to show a triptych I based it on a photograph of a slum in New York City using the same buildings for each of the pieces. In two of the images, there are figures who are alone in their solitude and darkness. In the third one, we have a suggestion of Mother Cabrini or one of her sisters coming down the steps and offering hope in a picture that otherwise is dark. Mary Magdalene is often shown in art history as a woman who is a penitent or a prostitute. I wanted to show her in a far different light as a first responder, for indeed she was the first responder at the empty tomb. Originally I was gonna have a halo of different images of Mary Magdalene from other painters, but decided that would distract from her face which shows so much fortitude and mission. St. Lucy was a martyr, and she's the patroness of eyesight. Her eyes were gouged out, and here I show her as a contemporary teenager, covering her eyes with her hands, 
and in the background there are people that are staring sadistically at her or perhaps us looking at her. And as with all the saints, contemporary versions, how do you show what particular saint you're trying to depict? And so because her gloves are soaked with blood, I show her gloves monogrammed with her name, St. Lucy. Father Tolton has a special place in people's heart here in Chicago. He wanted to become a priest, but no seminary would accept him in the 1800s. And so he studied in Rome. He expected to be sent to Africa, but instead he was sent back to Illinois where he had a parish on the south side of Chicago. In this depiction, I based it on the photograph that is so well known of him, but I wanted to show the suggestion of trees, of wilderness, of barriers, of empty windows, or even a suggestion of the city itself as a tribute to this remarkable individual. The Catholic Church can do a lot to support the arts. You know, the, the arts were such an important part of the church for so many centuries. And now in this particular century, you don't see a lot of interest. And I don't really understand why, because certainly the secular world is filled with images. Why aren't we filling the world with images? And there's some very specific things that we can do. Um, parishes can have gallery space. Uh, they can open up some of these empty rooms and offer uh, studio space to artists who could in return uh, give lectures to the parish. I think one of the problems is that the, the congregations don't have an appreciation for art, don't understand art, don't think it's an important part of their spirituality. And therefore, there really aren't a lot of patrons who are buying spiritual art. But if we don't support ourselves, who else will? These individuals, as well as many others that I have portrayed, did not make the journey alone. And that's why I did this one very small painting of an anonymous religious figure known only to God. And for me, a person who has been with me on this great journey has been Ingrid Albrecht of Chicago, who has encouraged me uh, to have a unique voice, but always with an eye to composition and color. I hope that these figures will inspire you to explore your own creativity and to seek out the sacredness that we all possess 